Okay, time to cut it into our fresh butterball, all natural turkey. This is gonna be our bait for today. One of our baits, we got a few baits, but this is really the only important one. Normally we use chicken, uh, but this is the first time I've actually used turkey to do this. I would imagine that the turkey's gonna work even better just because of the fat content. Um, they're much fattier and much stinkier than a chicken, so. Why does this look so freaking weird? All right, there we go, hi everyone. Okay, let's get into this thing. What nastiness are you, you're not even using gloves? Mm. What is your problem, dude? I just like the taste of this stuff. What is that? These are tuna bellies, tuna man. Belly. Look at that. Well, it's so oily that it just puts off so much scent and those crabs just love that stuff. Who are you? People Who probably I? don't know. I am Con and Byman with Filet Away Fish Mats. Filet Away, boys. Filet Away, baby. You guys know one of our sponsors, shout out to them. Everyone, we got a link in the description. You guys want to go get some filet away mats. We're going to show you guys those things in action today. That's but Colin, right. what's the discount code? Discount code is ADX15. ADX15 for all you addicts 15% off, right? 15% off. Anything yep. on the website, right? Or, That's right. And you guys got sweatshirts we've got on sweatshirts, there and stuff. We've got bait towels. We've got some right here. Look at these. These are awesome bait towels, microfiber. They work great. Well, like I said, guys, huge shout out to filet away fish mats. We're out here today with RJ of Lower Columbia RJ. River Guide Service, yes, right? Sir. Yes, Did sir. I get it right? Lower Columbia, Lower Columbia Guide Columbia. Service. Lower Columbia. Lower Columbia, but it works. It's good enough. One of the funnest things to do is what we're doing out here today. It's crabbing this time yes. of year. October, November, the crab are full. They're delicious. So if you guys want to get out, RJ is an awesome guy to go with. Just do a crabbing trip. It's it's a lot of fun. It's you fun. can catch some bottom fish while you're waiting for your crab. You go home with a lot of meat. It, it's it's good food. Crab right now is like 30 bucks a pound. Yeah, so if you're going to spend the money, you might as well come have an adventure while you do yeah, it. Yeah, and you charge what, 225 Yeah, 225 225 yeah. a person, guys. Link in the description. Thanks for letting us yeah. come out, RJ. Good time. Oh, shad now. Yeah, now we got some shad, man. Mm. Well, oh, everyone. Oh, this looks wrong. Jordan, you want to welcome everyone to Hi, the everybody. Of welcome back to another butterball of an episode. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Ooh, we got the gizzards. Might have to save those for later, eh? We got Mr. Pete back here, also from Filet Away Fish Mats. Pete, say hi. This is making me hungry. We got a leg and a wing here, so this, this is the pot right here. Ooh. You're a leg and wing guy, eh? <laughs> I'm a leg guy. I'm a sure. dark meat guy myself. I really like legs. Not all the just way on to heaven. Legs all the way to heaven. We're gonna be pulling heaven up from the depths. It's gonna be an amazing day today, guys. Beautiful weather. Turkey. These guys are gonna be eating good today. We should have a lot of crab action. Mm. Down, down, down we go, buddy. In the water. There we go. It's fishing time, everyone. We're going for my favorite fish in the world, rockfish and lingcod. My freezer was starting to get a little empty these things and it's a blessing to live here and be able to get these delicious fish. It's very much like a snapper if you live on the East Coast, uh, but it's a white fish. It's a delicacy of sorts and we're going to do an incredible recipe with this stuff today. We're going to pair both of the things that we're catching at the end of the episode and make a new recipe that I've never done before, but I'm very excited to try. Marlon suggested it, but uh, it's time to fish. So let's get some stuff on the bottom. Dance. Holy Dang it. moly, holy. Missed him. Oh, oh, oh. Are we getting again? Oh, come on. <laughs> it's bottom. Oh, that's getting bottom. That ain't bottom. That ain't bottom. <laughs> Woo! You're reeling bottom. <laughs> I'm reeling up the bottom right now, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Look at that. Huh? Woohoo! Start off with a toad. 
I got him! I got him! Got him on the fall. Ooh, ooh, that might be a ling. Oh god! Oh, he's ripping me up. Could just be a big bass. Though. Ooh, yeah, that's heavy. Or I got him snagged or something. Who knows though? We're about to find out. Oh, really nice ling! Really nice ling. <laughs> got him! Yeah! Ling down, ling ling, ling ling down. First fish, and the perfect one. Check him out, everybody. The gnarly teeth on that thing. That one seems like bigger than normal. Beautiful link cod. Incredible colors on that thing. Look at those like, green spots on it. Now this is gonna be the tastiest fish of the day. Yeehaw. Oh, Arlen's on. I'm on. He's got a hog. Double up. Double up. Double up. Double up. Woo. Get a triple. Uh, you get it on the ball, Taco. Yeah. Yeah. Taco. Taco. Ooh, what do we got here? Taco. Nice. Taco. 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 Oh, that's Rippa. Rippa. <laughs> oh, it's a hog. Hog Johnson. Hog Johnson. Got a boat flipping. Woohoo. So here we have it. This is the Black Rock. One of the tastiest fish in the ocean, if you're asking me. And it's a beauty. It's a beauty, Clark. Sweet. Dude, they're they're from the bottom. We're in 25 feet. They're from the bottom up to like 15 feet deep. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Fish on right there. <laughs> Double Pete's got one too. Perfect. Holy crap, he just bit my look at that. That ling, he took me right off. He's a baby anyway. Yeah. He got a free swim bait. Oh buddy. Oh buddy. Oh buddy. Yeah, I think it's a good fish. fish. Oh, it's a huge one. There. There we go. Oh. Oh. Dude. Dude. That's nice a shot, brother. Oh. oh, hell yeah. Dude, you couldn't have hooked him in a better spot, dude. Alright, ready. Got him. That's another ling. That's another ling. Okay, oh no, it's a big rock. Huge one. Dude, that was, that was talking. Perfect. Perfect. Quick release. Perfect. Ooh, he's bendo. Yeah. Gee. No, go back. That's a sea bass. Hey, look at this one. That is. Oh. Cool. I thought that was a ling. Oh yeah, boys. Oh, nice. Boy. Oh yeah, that's a total bad. Nice and nice. Good one, Conan. Yeah, boy, Conan. Good one or no? Yeah. Look at the teeth marks from the ling on his back. Yeah. Look at the teeth marks from the ling on his back or something. Look at that right here. Oh yeah. Yeah, he got chewed. He had a little hitchhiker going with him. He got chewed. That's probably why. It Look at that. Fell right there. I felt it hit. And it started pulling line, and then it must have let go. We gotta get our sea bass, and we might drop some bait down there. Oh, I got a good one. Yeah. It's barely hooked. One, two, three, go. Barely hooked. That's another good bass. What a pig. I cannot wait. I'm getting hungry already, everybody. Our pots are soaking over there with our butterball turkey in it. We're slamming fish. The bites kind of died down a little bit. I don't know if the tides changed a little bit or if we just kind of hammered on this school and they've moved. But nevertheless, I have a feeling we're pretty close to a limit anyway. So we only need a couple more. Might send some bait down for a ling. Try to get a full limit today. This is all about limits today. It's a harvest day. There he goes. Uh, head shaking like a bat. What do we got? Cabby, 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 but it's cold. Cabbies are closed. It's a cool fish though. Yeah, it is. There he goes. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Yeah. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. You're going to get spooled. Yeah, dude. And he's going to take you into the rocks. It's only 20 pound liter, but... Ah, oh, there he goes. I couldn't stop him. That was a toad. 
That was a Ling for sure, dude. Yeah. He bit his, bit his lure off completely. Yeah. That's a good one. Oh. Yep, 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 I'm loading up one for you. I don't have very much line, dude. You I'm gotta going. go go fast. I have no line. No line. Zero line. Okay. Zero line. He's gone. Did he? Literally no line. Jeez. That was big. That was quick. And he was like, that was a fish for sure. Yeah, see. I want this. That was big, big. Did he break you off or No, I just out? pulled out because I had to like hold him. Oh. That's why I was like, go, go, go. I was no trying. Line. I was trying. I mean, he took all my oh. line. We're good. We're good. Bounce, 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 bounce. Get us out of here. Get us out of here. Get us out of this. Set her up. Set her up. Set her up. Good. Settle. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. That was close, dude. What the that was close. Took a rogue wave, almost lost the whole boat. But we're good. Everything's good. Are you okay? okay, I grabbed you. I, I know. I saved her, dude. Okay. She was almost gone. I was in the water. The whole, all I the grabbed her. Okay. Holy! You like, literally everyone, pulled me out of the boat. Put the my jacket on. <laughs> that was a rogue wave. Did we lose our fish? No. no. Okay, everyone. So you guys got to see that in full speed and in slow motion, and I thought I would jump in here and just take this opportunity to really kind of break down what's going on here. So if you guys look at like the first couple camera angles, it was a super nice day out there. It was really flat, nothing to worry about at all. Like it, honestly, it was like one of the better oceans that I've ever been in in my life. And so you can see in one of the camera angles, Jordan's like eating Cheez-Its. I'm just standing there and I'm like putting my rods up and that wave that hits us literally comes out of nowhere. Like, all of a sudden, it was just on top of us, rolling us over. Like, none of us thought anything was dangerous out there at all. So a couple of things happened, guys, and one of the things that I think is really, really important to note here is if we didn't have a captain like RJ reacting as fast as he did in that scenario, I don't know that we would have made it out there alive. RJ reacted so quickly when that wave hit us, it knocked everyone to the ground and he was able to get on the steering wheel and get on the throttle and get us out of there while he was like down on his knees still on the floor. So huge shout out to RJ, huge shout out to having a great fishing captain to be able to get us out of that scenario when something bad happened. So the second thing I wanna talk about, we were in a 28 foot Alumaweld Pacific and I truly don't think, if, if we would have been in a smaller boat, it would have been over. We would have flipped, no question. You know, RJ has a very, very big, very, very nice boat. Like I said, it's a 28 foot Alumo Pacific with an offshore bracket, 250 horsepower main motor on there with enough power to get us out of that scenario. So thank goodness that RJ had that boat and thank goodness we were able to react that quick. Jordan also reacted. I don't know if you guys saw, but he was up on one side of the rail of the boat. Basically all of us were trying to keep the weight of the boat to that side, to the high side of the boat because Guys, I don't know if you can tell in the footage and hopefully it captured it well, but we were like this. We were so close to flipping. 
like I thought we were flipping. Like I, everything in my head said, oh my gosh, we're going under. And I was like, all these things were going through my head. Like, how do I save my wife? I actually grabbed Sharon, my wife. She was fully out of the boat. I grabbed her, pulled her back in. Sean almost falls completely out of the boat and he catches his, catches his footing and stays in. Just a very, very scary scenario. And thank goodness everyone reacted quickly. We were able to get out of there safely. And we get out of there and we go to the other side and then we're all just sitting there kind of in shock, like soaking wet, all of us are drenched. We can't believe it. we just made it out of there. The boat's bilging the water out. Like it seemed like for 30 minutes, there had to have been thousands of gallons of water. I don't know how the Illumawell didn't sink, but shout out to our sponsor, Illumawell for making a good boat. Shameless plug there. And so it's really important. I just wanted to take this opportunity to just know that everything is unpredictable out there. The ocean is unpredictable. We learned a lot from this experience being out there and thank God something didn't happen to any of us and we made it out alive. But I'm still just so shaken up from the scenario and I just can't believe that we made it out of there alive. Luckily, we're all good. We didn't lose a fish. All I lost was my hat. Now it's time to go get some crab. Almost lost my wife. <laughs> I had to save her. But I'm glad I put a life jacket on her before we came out here. Yeah, I've got 50 bar crossings this year. I can usually see them, and that was a rogue one. That one was, that one was crazy. Woo! Well, we made it. That's all that matters. Yep. Yeah. No, and we got our fish still. <laughs> <laughs> we still got buckets of fish. All right. Minus an American flag hat. Huh? Probably the second scariest I've ever been in my life in a boat. That was gnarly. How about you, babe? I'm not coming to the ocean ever again. She says she's never coming to the ocean again, which I can't blame her. I've taken her out here two times and both times were not good. <laughs> Pete, what is your feeling right Honestly, now? Honestly, it didn't shake me up because I didn't see any of it coming. By the time it was done, it was over and I didn't have a chance to get scared. It was, yeah. I was just looking at that back corner and yeah. Got some crabbies? Ooh, look at that monster. Yeah, there's a mondo right there. Not very many though, huh? Uh, that's keeper, keeper, that's keeper. Lives right there. Keeper? I think so, let's measure it. There he is. Ah, he got me. He's got some reach on him. That's to be male. He is. He's got a dry dollar bill. That is a freaking giant. That's what we want. There for us. Oh my god! Feels heavy. Stop! 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 Look at that! Holy oh god! Mondo! There's some crab! <laughs> yeah! We got some crabbies in there! It's a turkey! It was a turkey! They like turkey. Look at them all. They're all big too. Yes. Wow, look at them all. Don't even have to guess on a lot of these ones. That's yeah, keeper. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Yeah. That's a keeper. Male. So you can tell the male, you guys, females have a really, really wide, really, really wide and almost rounded tail fin there. So that's definitely a keeper. Another male keeper. See, that's a female. That's a female. It's too small anyway, but it's a female, so we gotta throw it back. Oh, that's a good one there. Look at him. <laughs> they sure gobbled up the turkey. That's funny. Feels heavy? Feels heavy. I like steel gear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Yeah, look at this one. Whoa. <laughs> Those have only been in there for what, an hour and a half? An hour. An hour. Super short soak. Normally you'd leave these things all day long, and if we did, I don't think there'd be any more room for crab. These are Dungeness crab, everyone. One of the tastiest little creatures in the Pacific Ocean. Beauty. I always love the patterns on their backs. They got like that devil goat on it. Man, they're good. These are gonna taste so good. Going in. Oh. <laughs> Look how thick those legs are. Wow. 
That thing's a stud. Mm. Feeling crabby? Sean, would you like a jalapeno? Yes. Thank you. Hey, guess what, everyone? It's gonna be a whole nother year of addicted life with elk meat because I shot another elk this year. I'm afraid of marlins. Yes, sir. Oh, oh wait. That looks delicious. Looks like some nice crab. Got some weight. Oh, I just got quite a few. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I'm going over. I'm going over. All right. Probably not. Oh, look at this ball dragger. Yeah. Jordan? Oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Oh, good first go, huh? It's loaded. Oh, yeah. 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 Dude, they're stiff. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. oh, oh. You said it. Look out. Bring it on over. Party. Keep it. Keep it. Here, for all these guys out here that use these Danielson plots, there's a little trick right here on these plots. Take your pencil head right here and just wrap it around the doors. And when you pull it up, those doors will fly open. And it'll help weight them down. And the doors fly open, the crab come out. It works perfect. And it's the same thing like with the tie, correct? That door will yeah. swing open with the, with the yep. current. And just put a little bit of weight on your doors. Look at that mond. Thank you, brother. Look at that wow. leg. Wow. Really. So what happens, everybody, with these crab, in the summer times, any month without an R, yeah, the, the, the crab are molting. So you'll catch these things, they look awesome, they look big, and then you crack that shell open and there's almost zero meat. It's actually annoying. You can kind of check work and than feel. It's yeah, it is. You can kind of check when you pull them in and feel, and they'll be squishy. You'll be able to push the shell together. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, baby! Oh, yeah. <laughs> One crap, two crap, three crap, four. We are not gonna be able to close the door.
new freedom chicken hat. Nice. <laughs> Lost my American flag, but got one better. <laughs> All right, we're doing crab stuff, Link Cod. But first, we got to cook the crab and munch on it a little bit. It's a crabitizer, if you will. Uh, so we're gonna get the crab cooked. I have a little bit special method I do, but I think we're just gonna get these things boiled up. We're gonna do them with the shells on, because there's one best thing that comes with these crab, and that's what's under the shell. So we're gonna slurp on that butter for a second, and I'm gonna get to cooking. Time to cook some Dungeness crab. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna get our dip ready once our crab is done. So I'm gonna take my knife very carefully here and butterfly these things open, not all the way, but just enough so I can lay it backwards. There we go. Should take a good step. So to start my stuffing recipe, going with Whole jar of cream cheese. The crab is almost done. The boil has come to a royal. I'm going to add my ingredients, and the crab's going to go in on top. I'm going to heat this up just a little bit uh, so that it can actually melt down and kind of all pull together, so it's not super chunky and lumpy. Get a nice creamy mix. Scotch of the old classic Old Bay. Pretty healthy. There. And then some breadcrumbs and a little bit of Parmesan. Okay, I will bring this to a simmer. Ooh, buddy. There he is, everybody. This is going to be the addition to our. Oh, all my butter's coming out. Oh, I wanna keep them upside down because there's an important part of this crab still remaining. Oh, oh, ow, ow. That's boiling water. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's the trick. You bust off a back leg, pull out this little guy right here, and then you do a little mixing. Call this sloping the butter, everybody. I'm gonna wait for it to cool down a little bit, but this is my absolute favorite. I thought it was the grossest thing ever until I tried it. My good friend, Mr. Ruben Estevillo, if you're out there watching, he's the one who showed me. Mmm, that's good. Oh, it is like a buttery, kind of sweet flavor almost. Oh yeah. Mm. This is a good reason to try anything twice. Yum. Looks like egg flour soup. All gone. Okay, I'm just start throwing chunks in here. I picked the most empty one. Ooh, there's a good chunk. Please see the comments below, everyone. What do you think of this idea of this magnificent recipe? That looks good. Should have bought some crackers. Gotta give it a try. A little bit of cowboy seasoning on each side here. It's a little extra flavor, a lot of flavor and ingredients in the um, fish or in the in the stuffing itself. So I'm not gonna go crazy on my seasoning. There we go. And now for the stuffage. 
Okay, I'm gonna go my cast iron pan here. Get a little bit of butter in the bottom of it so that we don't get any stickage. Oh yeah. Now's when we enjoy the fruits of the labor of Con and pulling all the pots. <laughs> hey. Oh, oh right, that's George. right, Jordan. He helped me, though. He helped me. I will say, though, I don't think there's much better seafood than fresh <laughs> crap. It's so good. Mm. It's unbelievable. I kind of wish I had a little, like, worker here that I could Somebody pay could <laughs> to <laughs> peel. Oh. But, yeah. Where is gold? <laughs> Mm. It does taste like butter. I'm so, it's right. Like, it's it's like a good soup. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. so awesome tasting. Oh, oh my god! It worked. Let's do a little basting real quick. Basting. We're basting. We're basting. Oh man, his gout are up and no joke. All right. We're ready, everyone. Just gotta try it. Thank you. Connie, you Look at the color. One more spoon over there. The yummies. There are really? white wings there, yeah. Huh. And I shot my first white wing like 25 years ago, straight across from me. Come in it should be illegal. They're old, bro. <laughs> oh my god. And they need a white I'd die for that twice. It's like you gotta figure out which which side to take oh, like, off. Every time we drive through it, I'm like, oh man, that yeah, stuffing is good. It's in the North Getty Block. Baker made it better. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Better than Lion and Lure? <laughs> Way better. <laughs> That's well, incredible. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Oh, real. Tell you right, Blues Fest. Nice. Did all that mm. good stuff. You know something's good when you don't, like, you just want to stay by the, your little spot on the pan and don't let anyone else get in here. <laughs> Throwing elbows. <laughs> oh. oh. Like a bunch oh. of cows around the feeder right now. Mm. Is that good? <laughs> wow. Look, guys. We almost ate all of it, but then I <laughs> then I remembered Sean. <laughs> made him Let's see it. You're Get more camera time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's such a camera hog. <laughs> What's little think of it? That's really good. Oh, yeah. Flavor bursts, huh? This and a stuffed yeah. mushroom. Yeah. That is good. Probably two of the favorite, my favorite things that Jordan has cooked. Yeah, I would have to agree. This is yeah. a, this is this a stuffed for me. mushroom. Don't get gout. <laughs> well, I mean, sitting here thinking about it, I mean, I've been running down here since I was 18. That was 22 years ago, 23 years ago, and I've got 40 to 60 a year. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that puts me 1,200 bar crossings. Yeah. And this is the first time today was the first time I've ever been scared. We weren't even really crossing. And we either. weren't even on the bar. It was no, one. We were at we the just, jetty. Yeah. We were crossing it was the, jetty the sunken line. part of the jetty. And, yeah. and the problem that you run into is you get incoming tide, you get underflow of the current. And they stack up, and it doesn't matter what the tide's doing. Yeah. Well, the thing that was so weird, and you guys can see in the video, and maybe Sean will replay, is you can tell all of us were like, super we, chill. We thought everything was fine. Yeah. Was, I'm like was... putting the rods away. I'm like, hey, and I'm just talking. I was talking about hunting in Idaho. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I look up. I'm like, oh shit! It just came out of nowhere. Yeah. It's it's one one weird cross. I mean, you can try to time your wave and get the angle. Yeah. Which is what we did. We were sitting right in it. You flow with it and one wave broke funny and came 90 degrees at the boat yeah. and it just pitched the boat sideways. Like and talk about that. RJ, like when some, you know, let people know when you get in that scenario, like just what you need to do to how to react. Well, the biggest thing is to square the wave up. Yeah. You have to square the wave up. You've got to yeah. get the nose into it, not the back. Cause that's where you get in trouble. That, yeah. And that's Take where water we were back, lucky back. and we got the wave on the side, right? The biggest thing is to get your nose into it and get the bow up and get through it. Now, where we were at, I know it's only about a 30 yard stretch. It's, it's the width of the sunken jetty where the problem is. You get on either side. I mean, we powered through it. We were out of it in 10 seconds. Yeah. But, and that and that's part on the captain too, that you, if you know you're going to cross it, you got to square it up and go, right? And don't sit in the middle of it and- Get and, beat to hell. Right? I mean, it, it rocks you. And then, then you get all those weird mixed ways, but you got to square them up. You have to square them up. And if you dip the bow, you got to power through. Well, no, and we went through it four other times. Yeah. yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So dumb. Yeah. Not a problem. And that's a lot of guys talk about, oh, you know, you know, they buy the 
And I'm not going to knock the dealerships, but they buy a packaged boat, a 20-foot boat with a 115. Yeah. Right? Or a 25-foot boat with a 150. That's the normal Columbia. Yeah. And, it, and, and it, all the guides that run them, 225 or bigger. You, you have to have yeah, the horsepower you, to get through that yeah. stuff. I mean, you guys saw how much water was in the boat today. We wouldn't have got out if I hadn't had a motor. No. If I'd had a 150 prop, we would have sat there. And well, just, also, we didn't have as big an Illumilo Pacific. I don't think a, a smaller boat would have made it. That would have been tough. Good learning experience, good it learning was. experience for everyone, really. You know, and like it. I said, man, 20 years of crossing the bar down here, and that was the first one. Yep. So. You hope it's the last. Yeah, so. I mean, it, it's going to happen. Everybody's going to run into it, right? We've all had those days where it's like, oh, man. Oh, but, I was just talking to Cam on the phone. He was telling me all sorts of stories about scary times he's had out there. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, there's a lot of guys. You look at it out here today. It's it looks flat beautiful. Call, yeah. Right? But you but get there's, there's five areas, miles that way. There's areas down here that on a day like this, man, it'll tear you up. Yep. And that's what that's what people don't expect. They come down in a 15 foot Valco and they get caught up in it. And that's when you start hearing the radio calls and everything else. Yeah, that's where okay. that's where it gets bad. Yeah. So. But like Jordan said, either way, it was worth it because we ate a lot of good delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's great. And I eat that wing caught again every day of the uh, week. And we didn't die. Nope. But did you die? But we did not die. You did not die. All right, everyone. Well. We made it home safe, thank God. Made it home with my best friend, made it home with my wife, all my friends. I can't believe, I've never really, only one other time in my life have I ever been in a scenario like that where we literally cheated death in a boat and uh, I just can't even believe it all happened. One thing that I have to say is, you know, again, I gotta give a huge shout out to RJ because I think being with the right boat captain and being with the right person who has years and years of experience underneath their belt when something like that happens, we made it out alive because of him. And, you know, I got to give a huge shout out to him. Thanks, RJ, for saving our lives and, and reacting so quickly in a scenario like that. You know, I've been fishing with you, you know, 20, 30 times, buddy, and I'd go fishing with you another hundred. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to go with you ever. And I want all you addicts out there to know that same thing. Like, this was a freak accident, rogue wave, and RJ is one of the best fishermen I've ever been with. He literally has thousands of bar crossings under his belt out there on the Columbia River bar, so. Oh, I'm still shaking up like it. Every time I rewatch the video or just talk about it, it's just such a, such a crazy experience. And I just wanna say thank you so much to all you addicts out there for watching our content. And you know, we, we kind of deliberated over putting this video out or not, and we thought, you know what, we, this is what Addict is about, is being real and, and doing things that, and showing you guys and using these things as teaching moments. So we just, we all elected to put the video out and show you guys what happened. And again, thank you guys so much and I'm happy to be alive and I appreciate all the subscribers out there for watching our videos and really, really, truly just love all you guys and love all the fans and just love everything that's happening with Addicted and the community and how it's grown. And I just want you guys to know that just in case for some reason I don't make it out of those scenarios. So just know we appreciate all you. Thanks again so much for watching our videos. We'll see you on the river.